quote from Michio Kaku, we will have to rewrite our textbooks on the beginning of the universe. Everyone has been waiting for this one image, which has finally been released to the public. The image from the James Webb Telescope shows unusual processes in the cosmos that once again challenge our science. Since the launch of the telescope, not only have our previous theories of the beginning of the universe been put to the test, now the exoplanets are also going crazy and turning our ideas of physics completely upside down. What is the new situation and what answers can scientists find to this new provocation? These days, we are experiencing a complete upheaval of the old rules in science. A telescope called James Webb is sweeping our old ideas of the universe off the table, and every image presented by this marvel of space exploration is a hit. James Webb, the telescope's namesake, would have been proud. Webb was head of NASA for a long time. Although he was not a scientist himself, but came from a business background, Webb knew how important it would be for mankind as a whole to explore space. In the 1960s, Webb pushed space travel enormously, launched the Apollo program, and advocated space probes. Today, scientists are amazed at what the telescope named after this pioneer of space exploration can do. Images so clear and sharp that they take our breath away. For the first time, we are holding complete analyses of exoplanets in our hands, some of which are thousands of light years away from us, and Webb is relentlessly showing our scientific community that they have been resting on their old findings and ideas for too long. At first, many scientists are also experiencing uncertainty and a queasy feeling these days. Everything they believed in could now turn out to be wrong. Michio Kaku, the popular astrophysicist from the USA, is one of the researchers who is sanguine about the new developments. Kaku has long postulated that our previous theories were incomplete. The fact that we have never been able to unite the world of subatomic quanta and particles with the world of formed matter alone shows that we have not understood fundamental processes in the universe. Now, exoplanets are also breaking the laws of physics. It's crazy. At first, it was only galaxies that were so old that they didn't fit into our cosmological picture. Then came black holes and gigantic structures that existed more than 13 billion years ago, when the universe was supposedly still in its infancy. Now, even with the planets, nothing is as it once was. The latest images from the James Webb Telescope show us a series of exoplanets that turn our previous ideas about planets upside down. James Webb re-examined some of the strangest known exoplanets with his keen eye and his unique arsenal of spectrometers. These instruments break down even the smallest light signal into its individual parts and analyze traces of elements, gases, evidence of water, and parameters that allow conclusions to be drawn about the size and orbits of distant planets. In the process, Webb finds more and more anomalies, extremes, and the craziest planets. One remarkable example of these impossible worlds that defy the rules of physics is KELT 9b an ultra-hot Neptune orbiting so close to its star that the temperatures on its surface are high enough to split water molecules into atomic hydrogen. The extreme proximity to its star further leads to a phenomenon scientists call atmospheric blow-off. The planet's atmosphere is literally blown away from the star. This discovery is unique among all planetary atmospheres known to date, and for this reason alone, this planet is a challenge. Webb finds so many exceptions and extremes that it's statistically impossible. This planet is so strange that it's practically impossible to classify it, and it's a particularly blatant and difficult to explain exception to all the rules we humans have created. Let's take another look at a world that terrifies scientists. WASP-76b is a giant exoplanet with iron raining from the sky on its night side. The planet orbits its star in a bound orbit and thus has an extremely hot and cold side. The metals that are melted and vaporized on the hot day side solidify into iron in a global cycle on the far side of the planet and then fall to the ground like rain. Once again, scientists are dealing with extreme conditions that impressively demonstrate the physical processes on exoplanets and create more questions than answers. 
Particularly fascinating and puzzling is the discovery of planets orbiting their stars in the opposite direction to other planets in the same system. Such a discovery forces astronomers to rethink theories about the dynamics of planetary systems and the forces that determine their orbits. WASP-17b is an example of such a crazy world. This planet was found as part of the Wide Angle Search for Planets, or WASP for short. This exoplanet is a huge gas giant that looks a bit like our Jupiter, but orbits its star in a retrograde orbit, which means that its orbital direction is opposite to the rotation direction of its star. Until now, this was considered scientifically impossible. According to current theories of planet formation, all planets in a system should orbit their star in the same direction as they evolved from the original protoplanetary disk. One theory that explains such orbits is that gravitational perturbations from nearby passing stars or other massive planets in the system can dramatically alter the orbit of a planet after its formation. Another possibility is that a gravitational dance between several large planets can cause one or more of them to be pushed into a retrograde orbit. When we look for crazy planets, we don't have to look beyond the boundaries of our solar system. In the Kuiper Belt, we find the dwarf planet 2007 OR10, which scans have shown to be unusually dark and red. Scans with Webb spectrometers show that this planet is probably rich in complex organic compounds that scientists call tholins. Despite its considerable size and peculiarity, 2007 OR10 has so far remained without an official name because the planet's exact orbit has not yet been determined. The probable composition the organic substances that are ultimately the building blocks of life and the unusual color do not fit the picture of the other dwarf planets in the Kuiper Belt. Where does this planet come from? How did it form? And why is it so hard to see? Due to its great distance, it's extremely difficult to observe 2007 OR10 accurately and over a long period of time, even with our best telescopes. 2007 OR10 is possibly the third largest dwarf planet after Pluto and Eris, and researchers see it as an important key object for understanding the dynamic processes in the Kuiper Belt and the evolution of the entire solar system. Planets without a star? Is that possible? Would you have believed that there are planets without a star? Planets actually form in the dust and gas disks left over from the birth of stars. Then, they remain gravitationally bound to their star. At least, that's what you would think. However, vagabond planets show that this does not always have to be the case. Such planets are cosmic loners without a star that drift freely through space. But where do they come from, and how can they survive in the hostile cold of space? Vagabonding planets can form in different ways. One common way of formation is ejection from their original star system. This can happen through dynamic interactions with other planets or close stellar flybys where the gravitational forces are strong enough to pull the planets out of their orbit. Another possibility is that they were formed as isolated objects in a star-forming region, similar to stars but without sufficient mass to initiate nuclear fusion processes. This could also explain the existence of jumbos, for example. Jumbos are Jupiter-mass-like objects. As the name suggests, they are similar in size and mass to Jupiter, which is itself considered to be an obstructed star. Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system, would not have lacked so much mass that it could have started nuclear fusion processes itself. However, the necessary little bit was missing, and so it only became a planet. James Webb shocked the scientific community once again when the telescope discovered 80 such vagabond Jupiter planets in the Orion Nebula. The really bizarre thing about this discovery is the almost unbelievable fact that these 80 Jupiter-like planets have formed 40 binary systems. This means no less than that there are 40 vagabond pairs of planets orbiting each other in a relatively confined space within the Orion Nebula. This is bizarre and actually scientifically impossible. The mere existence of the many Jupiter-like planets may, of course, be due to the fact that the Orion Nebula is one of the most intense star-forming regions we know of. However, more detailed investigations then showed that the planets are not really planets at all, 
but are somewhere between planets and brown dwarfs in terms of mass. Of course, this suggests that they are prevented stars, because brown dwarfs are among the smallest stars we know of. But what processes in the Orion Nebula are responsible for prevented stars, which somehow act like planets, dancing freely through the cosmos in binary systems? The mechanisms behind this are once again an extreme challenge for our scientists. They are probably a class of objects in their own right, and this finding once again pushes the boundaries of our astrophysics. It is possible that such massive, free-flying objects are much more common in the universe than we thought. They could be quote-unquote normal, but they are unusual for us because we were previously unaware of the phenomenon. We have not been able to detect exoplanets in the depths of space for very long. Studying them more closely has long been a challenge, and the James Webb Space Telescope represents a milestone in this respect. We are naturally thrilled by such discoveries, but scientists are slowly becoming overwhelmed by the new phenomena and impossible discoveries. Nothing is as they thought it would be. Has science come to an end? Did you know that the James Webb Telescope was actually created to fill gaps in our knowledge and confirm the theories we already had? Instead of closing gaps, the findings are tearing new holes in the constructs we call truths. Some are saying these days that the crisis Webb has triggered is the end of our old science. As Michio Kaku has already said, we will have to rewrite our textbooks. But what do we write in them now? No coherent new answers have yet been found, and researchers are desperately looking for new explanations. We may have to say goodbye to the idea that our astrophysics and cosmology can really unlock the secrets of the universe. Become a subscriber now. The best videos are yet to come.